Hi, this is Rick Caesar from ocularplastics.info and in this video this is an elegant technique for entropion repair uh, which uses a minimum number of skin sutures at the end. So the markings are uh, a lateral upper lid skin crease uh, essentially for uh, a canthopexy incision but in fact this is a modified tarsal strip that I'm going to perform and then there are two marks here for the exit points for the everting sutures. The local anaesthesia is 2% uh, lidocaine with adrenaline and the focus here is the fact that the anaesthesia is being injected completely transconjunctivally. Uh, this uh, is a, a very simple adjustment from injecting through the skin, but it means that with a few drops of proxymeticane in place, uh, this is the least painful way of uh, in, instilling local anaesthesia into these tissues. So I very much recommend uh, this technique if you're placing local anaesthesia into the eyelids. Uh, the transconjunctival approach is simply less stinging. So yes, what's, what's not to like there? Once completely anaesthetized, the next step is to create your incisions and start the dissection of the tarsal strip. I'm using a, a monopolar technique here uh, which of course gives a very uh, bloodless incision but this isn't essential this can obviously be done just as well with a number 15 blade and some bipolar cautery. The tarsal strip when performed with monopolar you need your settings nice and low you really don't want to be doing too much cautery you want it mostly on cut but it is a a very speedy and elegant way to perform a tarsal strip. My mark has just ebbed slightly, but I'm making the dissection here on the gray line now to split the lid into an anterior and posterior lamella. I'm just deepening the uh, exit uh, point on the lateral, uh, lateral incision and then using the two cotton buds to push down and fully reveal the orbital rim at that point. To complete the dissection of the strip is uh, again just as easy to use uh, scissors uh, and or a blade but this technique with the monopolar which it simply means that it, there's absolutely no bleeding um, and it, it's very very pleasing as a technique. I don't know sometimes whether the absence of blood actually uh, makes the tissues slightly slightly less sticky afterwards i think uh, there's a few you having a few fibroblasts around is it can be helpful so it's very important for a for the tarsal strip that the tissues are completely denuded and absolutely vital uh, that you also squeeze now the meibomian orifices and empty out uh, the uh, my bone secretions. Then the end is end piece is trimmed off, leaving you with a nice little tarsal strip. Because the lid's now released, you can evert and you can see the line there of the lower lid retractors. So this is visible as a as a little a change in coloration, and you make two very simple stab incisions at that point. And this technique really is very very simple the 5-0 double armed vicral is passed directly as an everting suture but because of the two little stab incisions it becomes a buried everting suture so the first arm's passed the second arm then goes through uh, a couple of millimeters laterally And this suture is, is then simply uh, locked, each, each end being buried due to the nature of the stab. So you don't need to do anything uh, fancy here at all. It's simply by placing the entry point uh, at the level of the lower lid retractors 
and placing the exit point uh, uh, subtarsal uh, and using a 5 ovicral you'll get a, a lovely E version um, to prevent the entropion recurring. These little knots uh, are dropped into uh, the stab incision and you don't need any further suture to the skin. Uh, they will simply drop back and the wound will heal over the top. And it's this absence of any sutures to the skin which makes this a procedure that you can perform and then you can follow up your patient with a phone call. There are no sutures to remove and the key question you're asking your patient is simply is your eyelid still turning in or has it stopped irritating you? And so long as the eyelid has stopped irritating the patient uh, that saves them a trip to the hospital. And in these coronavirus times that's a good thing. Now the tarsal strip now needs to be sutured to the rim with 5 double arm proline and I pick up the tarsus now from the interior to the exterior um, rather than from the exterior to the interior and this I feel helps tuck it to the inside of the rim. Now at this point I'm just going to stop the video because there's a piece uh, that I've missed out which is absolutely vital and that is that you need to have fully opened up the tunnel just there between uh, your uh, incision at the lateral aspect of the, the lid crease and the reason you need to open this tunnel up is because you want the tarsal strip to drop into it completely freely. If you pull the tarsal strip into uh, up and into against tissue then it will simply cactus back out again. So this tunnel needs to have been opened and I've all, often now modified my technique so rather than pass the needle through the tunnel which gives the risk of the tip of the needle catching from here you can see the tarsal strip has dropped nicely into the tunnel I actually pass my forceps now uh, downwards through the tunnel and pick up the suture uh, with forceps and then pull the needle through once the sutures come through pull the needle through backwards so I'm now identifying the rim and this is always a little bit difficult because your view is not as good through the smaller incision and this suture is placed a little bit by feel. Uh, I simply think that's a, a, an inevitability of the canthopexy. Whereas with the tarsal strip you can see the rim effortlessly. With the canthopexy there's an element of, of feeling for where you're placing your suture. A good solid bite of the rim is still required but once this comes through you can see now the lower lid tightens up beautifully the tarsal strip is buried in its new tunnel and it is secured down to the rim the sutures are knotted the sutures are knotted and then the ends of the sutures are buried by passing the needle uh, laterally and out and this prevents uh, any irritating tip of the suture. That's then trimmed down and what's really nice with this technique is once that's done that's the end. You don't need to place a single further suture. No skin sutures are required at all.